So okay guys, today's video is going to be how to set up an alias as well as how to make it permanent by using the bash rc script file. Now actually, getting a persistent alias is not that difficult. If you ever messed with the .bashrc file, you can kind of see where we're going with this. The .bashrc file is a file script that is executed upon startup of our Linux distro. So what we're going to do is modify that file until it to launch our alias commands upon startup. That way the aliases stay persistent. Now when we go and open this file up here in a bit, I'll also explain a couple of other little neat tidbits and tricks that you can do with the .bashrc file. But before we do anything, how about we make a backup of that .bashrc file so in case we mess something up later, we can easily back it up and restore the original file. So to do this, you could type in cp.bashrc in the directory where you want the file to be copied to. Just keep in mind that the .bashrc file is a hidden file. You're not going to be able to see it with a simple ls. You got to type in an ls, tack a to see all files in order to see the .bashrc file. So I just thought I'd let you guys know that. That way, if you don't see anything after you copied it, yeah, that way you don't panic basically. Anyway, now that we got the cp.bashrc file typed in in our location, we can hit enter. That will back up our file to our documents and from here, we can go about modifying the .bashrc file and basically any text editor that you want. In my case, I like to use Nano and because it comes pre-installed on a lot of machines out there, I figured it'd be a good um, text editor to use for this tutorial. So yeah, to actually begin editing this file, just type nano.bashrc and then hit enter. Once you do that, you can scroll all the way down to the bottom and add your commands. And if you want to know some other little things about the .bashrc file, scattered throughout the file, there are these commented out sections which explain what the commands here do and various other scripts. Anyway, as you can see, I'm on one right now that talks about a history control, whether you should remember the history after you type a command in or not. So that's a pretty useful command to edit and alter if you so desire. Anyway, I scrolled all the way down to the bottom of my bash rc file, and as you can see, I got kind of a few aliases here and already set up on my system. One of my favorite commands to add, this isn't really an alias, it's a export hist control ignore space. That will allow it to forget any kind of command that you run after you put a space before it. So if I put a space before my useful alias here, and then go up with my up arrow to, you know, recall the history, it won't remember me ever running that command. So that's a pretty cool bash rc edit that you can do. But yeah, if you want to add your aliases in, this is how you do it. This is the command structure right here. All you do is type in alias, the name you want your alias to be, or the shorthand for your command. And in this case, the one I just ran was useful, so I called the command useful. And when I type useful in, it will execute this um, text file within cat and open it up in my terminal. Now you can open up text files, open up sh files, videos, you can set this up to do pretty much anything you want with an alias. As you can see here, I got this one called temp, short for temperature, and when I type that in my terminal, it will navigate to this script folder where I have all my scripts and launch this temp.sh script to show me the temperature of my Raspberry Pi 0W portable. Anyway, just feel free to type in whatever aliases you want here, and when you're done, just hit Control X, and then Y, and then Enter. Since I didn't make a change to that file, it just closed out, but you do want to hit Control X, Y, and then Enter to save the file. Anyway, you're going to notice something right off the back here, and I'm just going to point it out so you guys don't freak out. If you do add a custom command and try to type it out right away after doing the edit, it's not going to work. Remember the .bashrc file executes upon startup, and since this wasn't a fresh startup, we have to reboot before our commands become usable. So reboot your system just by typing in reboot, and your command should work when the computer comes back on. Anyway, that was a very simple video, and I hope it was able to help some of you guys out. And if it was, let me know in the comments down below, and if there's anything else that's kind of beginner-friendly that you guys wish to see me make a video on when it comes to Linux, let me know, and I'll make a video guide explaining how to do it. But yeah, for now, I'm going to leave this off here. DTPK signing off. Peace. Anyway, let's give it some help. Um, my phone's currently connected up to my Wi-Fi, so let's disconnect. 
And now, in the end, the parts that I had available to make this were not the same as the ones that he had used, like I said.